Senator Reid, we welcome you to the place where you began your long and illustrious career, and we all await your message. This past Thursday, America celebrated the 200th birthday of America's greatest president, Abraham Lincoln. The day before I attended ceremony at Ford's Theater, the site of his assassination at the hands of John Wilkes Booth. The next day, Thursday, I joined President Obama at a ceremony honoring Lincoln in the Capitol Rotunda. The week's ceremonies afforded us an opportunity to think about the many special qualities of Abraham Lincoln that have captured our national imagination for these many years. I think the trait that I most admire about Lincoln is his unsurpassed ability to bring people together. Days after he won re-election in 1864 to a second term, a term that would last about a month before his assassination, President Lincoln delivered an informal victory speech. With the Civil War nearly over and the Union's victory secure, Lincoln spoke of a task that was ahead that must have seemed nearly as daunting to him as the war itself, how to restitch the broken bonds of our war-torn country. He said, now that the election is over, may not all, having a common interest, unite in a common effort to save our common country. President Lincoln died before the Union would be fully secured, but he left our nation a legacy that we must never forget, that in our darkest hours, when the challenges we face seem the most difficult, a vigorous pursuit of common ground will always light our path back home. I've had the pleasure of addressing the Nevada legislature many times through the course of my career. When I was a member of the Assembly, our sessions were held in the Capitol. Today, as always, when I return, thoughts flood my mind of my six years as part of the Nevada State Legislature. For example, my vote was one that helped create this beautiful legislative building where we now gather. But my years as President of the Senate caused me to reflect and be reminded of the best friend that I ever had, the late and legendary Governor Michael Callahan. So in short, I look forward to today and every opportunity to visit old friends and share my thoughts on the legislative issues that confront our state and our country. We've met in prosperous times, some more so than others. In recent years, Nevada's economic growth has been so dramatic that our state's future seemed to be rolling along on the wheels of destiny. Today, we're not so fortunate. A national economic collapse beyond our state's control has brought our progress to a dramatic halt. A triple punch of corporate greed, consumer debt, and lax government oversight has left Nevada and our country facing the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. This vicious cycle of job loss, home foreclosures, and declining tourism has left our state with plunging revenues, forcing you, our state legislature, to make difficult choices that threaten the progress we've made in years past. These are difficult facts to face. I wish I could come to you in better times, with better news. I know you would prefer to be legislating for prosperity rather than recovery. But the people of Nevada deserve to know what's at stake. Every Nevadan should see the need for bold action and become engaged in the pursuit of near and long-term solutions. On the day he was elected president of our great nation, Barack Obama began working on a plan to address the economic crisis he inherited, spiraling unemployment, plummeting home values, and unchecked greed on Wall Street. Last week, Congress completed action on the president's recovery plan. Despite our affection for President Obama and the strong Democratic majorities in Congress, we did not simply rubber stamp the President's plan. Democrats and Republicans engaged in a serious and vigorous debate, and ideas from both parties were adopted to improve this historic legislation. This bill had broad bipartisan support, especially from Republican governors from California to Florida and states in between. In fact, we wouldn't have passed this legislation without the courage of three independent-minded Republicans. We have 58 Democrats in the Senate, soon to be 59. But we need 60 votes to end a filibuster. After marathon negotiations, Republican Senators Olympia Snow, Susan Collins, and Arlen Specter joined Democrats to enable this clearly needed legislation to pass Congress so it could make its way to the President, who turned it into law with his signature in Denver yesterday. 
Since this bill passed on Friday, there have been numerous accounts of the positive impact on our country. I'm now going to spend a little bit of time talking about what it does for Nevada. For Nevada, the bill we passed has three main components. It will protect and create three and a half million jobs across our country, tens of thousands of jobs right here in Nevada, with 90% of the jobs created in the private sector. This legislation will provide tax relief for Nevada's struggling middle class families, struggling to make one paycheck last until the next one arrives. And it makes critical investments in education, transportation, renewable energy, and workforce training to pave the road for long-term recovery. The total cost of this plan is significant, but economic experts from both sides of the aisle agree that bold action is needed and was needed. At a recent meeting in the Capitol, Mark Zandi, John McCain's chief economic advisor, Alan Blinder, a Clinton economic guru, and Martin Felstein from prior Republican administrations all told us that a bill such as the one we passed was essential to the country's economic recovery. This, this legislation invests our tax dollars, but unlike the fiscal policies of the past decade, this plan recognizes that every dollar spent belongs to the American people. That's why it ensures accountability, transparency, and oversight. It's not meant to line the pockets of the corporate CEOs who help create this mess. Here at the state level, it's not meant to plug every budget hole to let leaders at the state and local levels avoid their responsibilities. This important plan has one meaning for Nevada and our country. Jobs, 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 and more jobs. <clears throat> We invest hundreds of millions of dollars for highways, roads, bridges, and another $50 million for mass transit here in Nevada. This will put people to work immediately. It'll cause money to flow into Nevada for water and sewer projects that could approach $100 million. We empower the private sector to put thousands of people to work turning the sun, the wind, and geothermal energy into electricity that will help curb our use of fossil fuels and make us more energy independent. We help businesses grow and create jobs with new forms of tax relief, including a provision that allows half the cost of capital investments to be deducted and 100% deduction for small businesses. And we invest nearly a half a billion dollars in schools, technology in those schools, classrooms, labs, and other education programs to ensure that Nevada has a competitive workforce to attract new and innovative businesses. The economic recovery plan also provides immediate assistance to Nevadans who are struggling to pay the bills, find a job, and in fact keep their heads above water. That means tens of millions of new dollars and new benefits, and it will mean that 200,000 Nevadans who have lost their jobs in this recession will receive $100 more per month to help make ends meet. And we help return our unemployed to the workforce by investing millions more in worker training and placement programs. We provide new funding for school lunches, food stamps, child care services, meals for senior citizens. We make nearly a half billion dollar investment in FMAP, federal medical assistance percentages, which will alleviate the pressure of state Medicaid and county indigent care and other areas of our state desperately depressed budget needs. This is the largest percentage increase in FMAP funding for any state in the country. We address the housing crisis by providing an $8,000 tax credit for first-time home buyers and a program to help state and local governments in partnership with community-based organizations to purchase, build, and rehabilitate affordable housing. And nearly all Nevadans will receive tax relief, with almost a million of our state's workers and their families receiving $400 tax cut for individuals, $800 for married couples, and a $2,500 tax credit to help 32,000 Nevada families afford the cost of a college education. <clears throat> Economists are confident this plan will work, but we must remember that this is just the first leg of a three-legged stool. The second leg will be a comprehensive response to our housing crisis, as outlined in detail today by President Obama in Mesa, Arizona. Significant. The third leg will reform, our, will reform our broken banking system to get money flowing again with new accountability. We need regulation, but always remember what we do in government. We have to regulate just right, 
because too much regulation is just as bad as not enough regulation. We can't expect our economy to turn around overnight. The people in Nevada understand you can't dig out of an eight-year ditch that you've dug in eight weeks or even eight months. Nevadans have patience for the long road that lies ahead, but they don't have patience for more politics of finger-pointing, foot-dragging, or blame-shifting. As of yesterday, with the bill signing in the new Help for Housing, the climb out of the big ditch has begun. In the short time since President Obama took office, we've already seen a shift in the tone in Washington, D.C. No one expects Democrats and Republicans to suddenly agree on everything. But we have been engaging in serious pursuit of common ground, and that's a welcome change for all Americans. In just the first few weeks of this, the 111th Congress, we've not only passed the Economic Recovery Plan, but also a lands bill that will protect Nevada's great outdoors, help Reno economy through retrack, enhance private development in Henderson. It even provides land for expansion of the Nevada Cancer Institute, one of the country's premier treatment facilities for cancer. I'm also happy to report the Carson City Lands Act that balanced development and preservation in Carson City is also part of this bill. In addition to what this legislation does for Nevada, it creates wilderness areas throughout the country, preserves our national parks, and as pundits and editorial writers all over this country have said, it's the most important environmental legislation to pass Congress in more than a quarter of a century. And we passed the Lilly Ledbetter Fair Pay Act to ensure pay equity in the workplace, legislation leading toward equal pay for men and women. And we also passed, on a bipartisan basis, a new children's health insurance program to provide quality coverage for kids who are sick, for millions of children, including tens of thousands here in Nevada, and this will include regular doctor's care and the medicine they need to stay healthy. One thing is also certain, that because of a provision I forced into a bill late last year, for the first time, Nevada counties will receive full funding for county payments and payments in lieu of taxes which translates into millions of dollars for a state. So whatever problems we have today, they're greatly lessened as a result of this legislative victory. This is especially so in rural Nevada. None of these... <clears throat> None of these accomplishments would have been possible without serious-minded people from both parties working as partners. The winds may be shifting in Washington, but bipartisanship is nothing new in Nevada. I'm confident Speaker Buckley, Minority Leader Gansert, are working together for the betterment of Nevada. And in the Senate, young, talented Majority Leader Horsford will work in tandem with one of Nevada's historical figures, Minority Leader Raggio. The winds have definitely shifted in one area for Nevada with this new administration, and that's the fight on Yucca Mountain. Now, instead of fighting against the storm, Nevada has the wind at its back. In partnership with the other delegation members and state constitutional officers, officers, we should finally see the Yucca Project come to a close. I'm doing everything that I can to stop the dump, but I'm not the only one involved in this fight. This is not the time for the state to back off by cutting funding for the legal battles that are still being fought. We're in the last lap of the race, and Nevada needs every weapon to finally win this 20-year-plus battle. I know there's already debate on the best way to invest some portions of our state recovery funds. The top consideration must be how we put the most people back to work and rebuild Nevada's economy the most, quick, uh, most quickly. Any legislation is imperfect. As you know, legislation is the art of compromise. Legislation is the art of consensus building. Parts of this legislation will prove to be even better than we anticipate. But other parts of it may not meet our expectations. But that's what legislation is all about. Together, this plan will work for Nevada. In the words of President Lincoln, and I quote, I do the very best I know how, the very best I can, and I mean to keep on doing it to the end. If the end brings me out all right, what is said against me won't amount to anything. If in the end brings me out all wrong, 10 angels swearing 
I was right, would make a difference. That's the end of quote. So the scope of this crisis may be unprecedented in our lifetimes, but we have faced our share of challenges before and risen to the occasion each time. We may not know exactly when this crisis will end, but I'm confident with the signing of the economic recovery package and today's announcement in Phoenix by President Obama that history will record yesterday and yesterday as a time when recovery began. Thank you all very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Senator Harry Reid. Senator Lee. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that the Senate and the Assembly in joint session extend a vote of thanks to Nevada's native son, Senator Reid, for his timely, able, and constructive message. Thank you, sir. Assemblyman Oseguera. I second the motion. You've heard the motion. All those in favor of it, please signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, nay. The motion is carried. The appointed committee will escort Senator Reid back to the bar of the Assembly, please. Oh, yeah.